All right, so that actually probably didn't really tell you a whole lot about what an operating system is, you know. Crazy Van Meter Sensei, he's talking about special relativity and we thought we were taking a class in operating systems. All right, so what is an operating system? Let's be a little bit more concrete. Uh, I used to use the textbook by Professor Andrew Tannenbaum for, for this class, uh, Operating Systems Principles. It's a great textbook, but it's kind of old, so I use a different one. I'll show you here in a minute these days. Um, Tannenbaum Sensei defined an operating system as providing two main pieces of functionality. Resource management and extension of the machine. I go on to extend that using two more principles, naming and movement of data. So naming and movement of data are two of the functions that an operating system has to provide. First off, resource management. Part of where I was going with the discussion of special relativity is the idea that lots of things are going on in different places and you have to be very careful about, about the conflicts that might occur because you compute, you're doing something over here that might cause a problem over there, but you can't communicate, communicate the information very well. So an important role in the operating system then is to manage resources in a way that is consistent with making sure that everybody gets what they need and that no conflicts occur, that two programs don't um, use the same piece of memory or um, the same block on a disk drive, something like that. So the kinds of resources that get managed, obviously there's space on a disk drive, but there's also memory and access to the CPU itself. So we'll talk about scheduling of CPUs and we'll talk about memory management over the course of the semester. So that's resource management. Uh, extension of the machine means creating a software system that allows software application software, programs that are running on top of the operating system, to believe that they have access to a, a larger set of resources or a different set of resources than, than the hardware actually provides. Another term for this could be virtualization. We'll talk about virtualization in a variety of ways. Um, virtualization also ties into resource management, and I'll talk about that more in just a minute. All right, so we've got resource management and extension of the machine. Naming. Well, naming is one of the key things that, that an operating system always does. In fact, any computer system does it. You might think, first off, of a name as like a file name. Well, in a Unix-like computer operating system, including Mac OS or Linux or FreeBSD, the name of a file is actually a number. So you have that human readable name, and then there's the number that's also a name, and that number is called the inode number. And we'll talk about that way toward the end of the semester. But that inode number is what the operating system actually uses to keep track of the file itself. The process of naming involves translating that human readable name to that inode number. That's one aspect of naming. But memory also has names. Every byte of memory that you address, that you access, has an address, and that address is a form of name. Other computers have names. Processes have names. Devices have names. You can think of the address of a block on the disk drive as the name for, for that block. So I think of naming as one of the critical things. Um, I got that all the way back from the operating systems professor that I had when I was in graduate school, a man named Kim Corner, who taught me a great deal. The fourth thing that I like to talk about is data movement. The movement of data into and out of the machine, from storage devices into memory, from memory out onto those storage devices, uh, but also out onto networks, and also from one process to another, or even from one memory place to another memory place. All of these are operations are require access to physical parts of the system that 
you can't allow user programs to access very easily. If you allow user programs to access those, they can potentially cause uh, security problems inside the system. So that data movement has to actually be managed by the operating system itself. So extensibility of the machine, resource management, naming, and data movement. That's the way I used to teach this. But now, these days, I'm actually using a different textbook for this class. This lovely book. Operating Systems, Three Easy Pieces, also known as OSTEP, O-S-T-E-P, by Ramsey and, Ar and Andrea Arpachi Dusso. They're professors at the University of Wisconsin in the computer science or computer engineering department there. Um, I've known them since they were graduate students. When they were graduate students, they worked on a storage project, and I also used to work on storage systems as well. That was how I got to know them. So an OSTEP, which we're going to use as the primary text for, the, for this uh, course, they divide the key functionality of an operating system up into three major parts. One is virtualization, which we can relate to the extensibility of the machine we were talking about a minute ago. The second is concurrency, which relates to resource management also, but it means the sharing of resources within the, within the system at the same time, and also sharing of data, how you go about calculating some, something cooperatively, as well as actually sharing the resources. And then the third topic they talk about is persistence. And they don't mean just trying again and again and again. What they mean in this case, persistence is a technical term for data that persists or exists across time. In particular, across losing the physical power of your system or shutting a system down or something of that nature. Um, so in English, we call this non-volatility. The Japanese term for it is fukihatsuse. The two most important types of non-volatile storage that we use these days are magnetic disk drives and flash memory. You're probably using flash memory in your smartphone and maybe even in the laptop or desktop computer you're using to watch this right now. So virtualization, concurrency, and persistence. That persistence is the domain of I.O., but also of managing the data inside the computer system including um, where you store files on disk and things of that nature. So we'll cover that toward the end of the semester. The semester is actually going to be structured primarily around those three concepts um, from the Arpachi Dussos, but I wanted you all to also see sort of the older Tannenbaum view of things and also my own view involving both naming and I.O. as key principles.